We know you want your children to prosper. We know you want us to be free of bondages. We know you don't want us to be hindered by anything. And that's why you came a savior. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 53, he was smitten just because of us. He took the strokes so that we will be free of them. Oh. His pain is her gain. Tonight, Lord, we receive the gain. Tonight, Lord, in faith, we touch you. The songwriter says, He touched me. Tonight, He will touch you. Amen. Another songwriter says, I touched the helm of His garment. Tonight, in faith, You will stretch forth your hand, you will reach out, and you will touch Him in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because we know this will be done for us. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look on the platform, the chat, you'll find the outline. Also, it's on page six of the program. We're looking at the message, Great Faith for Healing and Deliverance. And in this message, the onus is on you. The Lord is expecting you to desire so greatly, so deeply, that your faith is aroused. Sickness brings trouble and pain into human lives. Satan's captivity limits people's capacity to live as God will intend them to live. Someone that is sick will waste time going here and there. When you read in Mark chapter 5, you'll find the woman, the Bible says she had gone everywhere for so many years and she had found no solution until a day when she reached out and touched the Savior. It's a season of the Savior. It's Jesus' season. We know that this is Easter, and it was the season that the Bible says he was, his, his visage was so badly mad. And that was just so that we will not take those beatings anymore. And that's why tonight I want you to don't just wait for someone to pray for you, even as we share together. I want you to, your faith to be buoyed up. If you look at Matthew chapter 8, I'll show you some things there pointing to great faith that the Lord himself highlighted for us. In Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading to you from verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Something happened. This man came asking. you find, I'm going to just use the acronym FAITH uh, to show what you will have if you will have great faith. The F there means you are focused. This man came. He wasn't asking for this or that. He was focused. Tonight, be focused. He was focused on the request. Focus on that particular request. And you'll find in that verse, it says, He came beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. So he came beseeching, he was asking, but he didn't just ask, he was going to appropriate. He knew when he came to the Lord that he could get. And he was coming there to take, to receive. Tonight as you've come, be ready to receive. He came. The scripture, he was beseeching. 
he had the focus on what he was asking. Focus. A, asking, and he was going to appropriate it. In verse 7, and Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. This man knew what he needed. And I'm telling you, if you want to wait until Jesus, somebody will come. Of course, Jesus is here with us. But if you want to wait and say, well, when the pastor prays, this man said, no, 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 don't worry. I know the word is there. And he says, this man was intense. That's I, the intensity. Tonight, I want you to be, you know, intensely demanding. So one, you have the focus. Two, you are asking and appropriating. You're not just asking that, well, they may bring it. You are asking and taking it. And the eye is, there is intensity. You are so determined. You are so believing. And then the T there is, you are trusting. You, you find here that the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not even worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, Please. and the servant shall be healed. He trusted the Lord will do it. He said, I know how it works. Don't worry. I have been someone in position of authority. And he said, I trust that once you speak the word, he trusted. He was trusting. He trusted in the word. He trusted. And tonight... We will pray. And as you pray, you trust the word. You trust that God has promised. You trust. And then the age there was, he was holding on. He held on. In verse 9, it says, I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. And he said to them, that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. How wonderful it will be if the Lord will testify of you tonight that I have not found such faith this year. Nobody like that has been so determined, has been so trusting to know that the word of God cannot fail, to know that the word of God, as it is spoken, will come to pass. Whatever sickness, whatever uh, the captivity, bondage, like giant mountains before any man today, any woman, faith is available. Your faith that you come forsaking all that you have gone through before, and you are just trusting that it will work out tonight. You are just believing the Lord that that thing, that situation must change. It is available like a bulldozer. It will remove the challenge. It will Amen. remove the hindrance. It Amen. will remove the long-term problem. Amen. You know, when you read in Matthew chapter 15 also, you find that woman that went to the Lord. Let's look at that together. In Matthew chapter 15, the Syrophoenician, the Lord himself looked at her and said, wow, this woman has faith. Nothing pushed her away. Then Jesus, I'm reading from verse 21 went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. She came asking. And this time she came asking for her, for her daughter. The other man, this is a woman. The other person was a man. So whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. This was a woman. The man came and was asking for his servant. This woman came. It was for her daughter. He said, it was a terrible thing. Grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. That is enough to put anybody off. But not that woman. Not that woman. Not that woman. Not a word. And his disciples even came to worsen 
the situation. They came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she cries after us. She doesn't pray like we pray. She, does, she has not dressed up like we dress up. She doesn't understand our language, the way we speak. She's a little bit different from us, the way she has dressed up. And then they said, send her away. I don't think, we don't think God will answer this one. <laughs> but that woman, thank God for that woman. And I want to thank God for you ahead. That tonight, you will not let any barrier hinder you. That tonight, you will be so focused on that which you are going to take. You are going to appropriate it. You are going to grab it. You are going to receive it. You are going to hold on to it. Because this woman, she stayed there. They said, yeah, dogs, only the, the, the crumbs fall. He said, even the crumbs that fall down, it's enough. Tonight, your face will make a difference. Amen. You like this bulldozer. Look at Mark, jump, jump with me to Mark chapter 11. I'm reading to you from verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, in God. Have faith in God. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God has all power. God is in every place where we are. And he said, have faith in God. Understand that God has all the information about your situation. Understand that God has the knowledge about the cause of your problem. You may not know. You do not know. You do not know why and what happened, who did what, how it came to pass. God, have faith in God. But beyond that, yeah. it says, have the faith of God. You know, when the Lord, when God said at the beginning that let the Spirit of God move across the whole earth and organize, it didn't say maybe it will happen. The moment it moved, it happened. When God said, let there be light, it didn't yeah. Template, will the light come? Will it not come? Light came. Have the faith of God. Tonight, have the faith of God. Have the faith that does not regret. Have the faith that does not doubt. Have the faith that is constant. Have the faith that is certain. Have faith in God. For verily, verse 23, I say unto you that whosoever, doesn't matter who it is. You are young, whosoever. You are a woman, whosoever. You are a man, whosoever. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, that specific mountain. It's not talking about everybody looking at one particular mountain. It's saying whosoever, whoever you are, wherever you are. And you are looking at that particular mountain, this mountain. And it says, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. So when you pray, when you ask God, and you say, tonight is that night, you're not going to say, well, I prayed about it five years ago, whosoever, whatsoever it is, whosoever, whatsoever, at whatever point in life, Five years problem, whosoever, whatsoever. Ten years, whosoever, whatsoever. And he's saying he will have what he said. Look at verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that, ye receive yeah. them, and ye shall so, have them. Yeah. You will have them. I will have them tonight. What God is looking for is faith that bulldozes, that gets rid. You know, if you look at that place, I want you to look at it again. It says, if you will say to the mountain, be rooted up, remove, I don't want to see you there again, and you believe, and you stay, and you know you have spoken it, and it is God's bidding, it's God's word. It says, you will have it. Tonight, I want you to have that faith. This Anisha woman will not go. She mm -hmm. was determined to have it. The disciples said, send her away. She wouldn't budge. Sometimes it is time. 
You know, we may even have this meeting and you decide not to stop praying because even after the meeting, you have that confidence, you have that assurance that that mountain must move tonight and it will move. Yes. It must move. Amen. It will move in Jesus' name. Amen. Manifest Amen. great Amen. faith for healing from sicknesses and deliverance from all captivity as demonstrated by these two examples we're looking at. You know, the Roman centurion and the Syrophoenician woman. Great faith. Great faith they manifested. The centurion was not a Jew. Great faith. The woman was not a Syrophoenician woman from Canaan. Great faith. And she was standing for something, for someone. And God answered our prayer. Tonight, God will answer our prayers. Let's look, yeah. let's look at point yeah. one. Acknowledgement of the presence of great faith. You know, Jesus, he pointed out where he find, found it, unbelief. Where he saw people had doubt. Where he saw they had no faith. Where he saw that they had little faith. Wherever he found it. The, why was he pointing it out? So that they will make correction. So that they will adjust. So that they will move to the righteous side. So that they will believe and not doubt anymore. Look at Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Whatever I found it. And you know why we are looking at it is so that you can see in your own life. So many times we think differently about our situations and circumstances. But he wants you to see in verse 40, and he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it ye have no faith? You know what happened there. This is why his disciples, and he had told them, we're crossing to the other side. And you know, God has told us this year that there will be enlargement. God has told us this year that there will be lifting, there will be rising up. God has told us this year, Amen. there is enlargement. Listen to me, listen to me. When there is enlargement, something that contained you before, something that kept you before, will not be able to keep you anymore because there is an enlargement. Something that was able to hold you down before, will not be able to hold you down anymore. Here, the disciples Amen. have been told we're going to the other side. But you know, they forgot the promise. And when the storm came, they forgot that they were going to the other side. They forgot that there is enlargement. They started to cry. They went to the Lord. And the Lord looked at them and said, why are you so fearful? Because of the bad dream you had, why are you so fearful? Because of what that person came and told you, why are you so fearful? Because of the interview you went to and you thought that they won't give you that. Why are you so fearful? He told them, who is it that you have? No faith. I already told you. You've seen the workings. And he was looking at them. And he says, they had no faith. They had no faith. In Matthew chapter 14. This is why his disciples. Let me show you someone else in Matthew chapter 14. I read to you from verse 31. It says, and immediately... Jesus, he stretched forth his hand, and he caught him, and he said unto him, O thou of living faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? You know, Peter, very, very precautious, every time jumping ahead, every time moving fast. And when he saw the Lord walking on the sea, he didn't, he jumped up and he said, if it is you, tell me to come, bid me to come. And you know, the Lord said, come. And that's enough. My brother, my sister, the Lord is calling you tonight. He's saying, come. Come and get the solution. Come and get the deliverance. And you know what happened? Peter got up and he started to walk on the sea. But when he saw the sea boisterous, he doubted. And sometimes that is the situation with so many. We start very well. We seem to be getting things done. It seems that it's working. All of a sudden, it's like it's not working anymore. 
you've prayed, it doesn't seem to be working. The answers are not, it hasn't come yet. It's not that it's not coming, it hasn't come yet. And we start to doubt. And when we doubt, what happened to Peter is what happens. They started to sink. He started to sink. Jesus said, why? Why? Will thou of little faith. Little faith will not get us there. What we need tonight, what we will employ tonight, what we will apply tonight is great faith. The faith that does not doubt. The faith that speaks the word of God. The faith that appropriates it. The faith that is so intense. People around you may call you foolish, but you know. Peter started to drown. And the Lord said, O thou of little, why did you doubt? Don't doubt. Don't doubt. Sometimes you know why and the enemy, what the enemy does. When you get a blessing and you don't shout it on the rooftops, he comes and he tells you, pinches you somewhere. And when he pinches you, you start to doubt whether you got it. The moment you doubt, you start to lose it. What you get today, you will not lose. Amen. Will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. So you find here that Peter started to doubt, he started to lose the grace offered him by Christ, and he started to sing. Let me show you something. As in Matthew chapter 17, come with me to Matthew chapter 17. Tonight, your faith will receive whatever you desire. So whatsoever you desire, when you believe, when you believe in Matthew chapter 17, I'm reading to you from verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus, apart. And they said, why could not we cast him out? Jesus said unto them, because of your own belief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain. What you need is even the least, the mustard seed is so small that the Lord is saying, even that small one but tonight you will go beyond even the mustard seed. You apply great faith. You know, I have shared this story jokingly of some of our leaders many, many years ago are praying for someone. And the person was in a way manifesting and approaching them and they were running away. Exactly what Jesus was saying, that they had unbelief. Something was happening, but they had unbelief. Something will be happening for you tonight. You will believe and you will see it happening in Jesus' name. Amen. So you find the disciples, you find Peter, you find there was unbelief, there was doubt, doubt in their hearts. The type of faith Christ will recognize, He knows it, He sees it in you. And that's why you cannot remain on that plane. You need to come up higher. Tonight, you are coming up higher. You are coming up higher. However, he also acknowledged the presence of great faith in individuals. He did not only recognize the presence of great faith in the Roman centurion and the Syrophoenician woman, but he also publicly acknowledged their great faith. How I pray that that will be your portion tonight. Amen. I can't say your amen. No. Amen. But Christ the, is working your life will be the pronunciation, will be the acknowledging that great faith in your heart. Do you know, do you know, when you testify that on that day, 30th of March, 2024, it was in the evening, we were in the conference, it was Easter time, it was the time of the resurrection, I believed God. I knew that that challenge I had been seeing, I wasn't going to see it anymore. Whatever was behind it must come to an end. And you know, you, you believe and you say, no, no, it must, uh, maybe there's something you haven't asking. And you're saying, God, is this how I'm going to be? Will it be like this forever? When are you going to come on the scene? When are you going to talk to this situation? But he's saying tonight, you, you will say to the mountain, you will say to the mountain. And what happens in your life will be the acknowledgement. Jesus will acknowledge the greatness of your faith through the manifestation 
of his power in your life tonight. You know, look, at, look at that story. Come back with me to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I read to you from verse 10. Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. Are you there? Matthew yes. 8, verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he yes, marveled. And he said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Not, and you know, if your story is the story that nobody has found that type of faith in abounding grace Christian ministry, that you are singled out. Well, many of us here tonight, we're going to get something. So it will be not just one person, many of us, because I'm number one on the list. I'm number one, I'm number one on the list. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You cannot contest with the pastor. I said it before, <laughs> one. In Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, I'm reading to you from verse 28, Matthew 15, verse Amen. 28. It says here, yeah. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. And he says, Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Even as thou wilt. My sister, be it unto you, even as you will tonight. My brother, be it unto you, even as you will tonight. It doesn't matter how many years. And you see as we go along, it doesn't matter how challenging it has been. It doesn't matter how difficult it has been. Tonight is that night where your faith is coming up higher. And you will be looking at the, 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 the storm. And doubting, you know, you can sometimes you can look at the storm, and when you look at the storm, you you are always you are almost saying that for the certainty you would drown in the in the in the storm, but you know Jesus came and he said, "Peace, be still." Peace. That was all. That was all. That was all. That was all. That is the faith that we have. We need tonight. Human tendency is always to acknowledge and point out people's mistakes, their sins, their misbehaviors, their shortcomings, their inadequacies, their doubts, their unbelief, their ignorance. You know, that's what human beings do. We easily see what other people have done wrong. We easily see why we should do it another way, their inadequacies. We seldom positively acknowledge and publicly proclaim people's good qualities and values. We need to follow the example of Jesus, our Savior. And we need to acknowledge the presence of great faith, as well as other good qualities, wherever we find them. Yeah. Wherever we find them. You know, you look at the life of Timothy. Look at 2 Timothy, chapter 1. 2 Th Timothy, chapter 1. I read to you from verse 5. Here it says, when I call to the Paul was talking about him. And so when I call to remembrance, the unfeigned faith, the sincere faith, the faith that was not shaken, the faith that was genuine, the faith that was real, the faith that was potent. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother also Eunice, and I am persuaded. That in thee also. You know, when we see our leaders, we see the examples of our leaders, our pastor, our coordinator, and you see the type of faith they manifest. You should be, many of us should be ashamed that we're just here, he said, be your mother, your grandmother, the type of faith they man, and I know because they are leading, you can manifest the same faith also. And tonight, you know, you want to think about what God has done in the ministry all these years, how God has built what he has built, the increase, the, 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 the enlargement, the, all that has happened. And you want to say, ah, if these men of God, if they could do this, then I can do also. That will be our portion. That will be our focus. That will be our purpose, that we will believe. He says, this same faith was in that, uh, in Timothy's mother, in also the grandmother. They were manifesting it. 
I want you, brother, sister, to be starting point in your own family, in your own family, that people will say, like, you know, when you read in Genesis chapter 4, you find the Bible says, in us, and in that day, they started to pray and seek the face of the Lord, that your lineage will understand prayer. The acknowledgement of great faith will start with you, that people will say, that woman, that man, he conquered a challenge of 15 years, a challenge of 20 years, that type of faith. I've shared with you some years ago of a friend of mine, and you know, he became a Christian, and we, we were quite close, and he, 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 he was in, a, in another church, but at the time he would visit our church at that time, and he waited year one, year two, year five, year 10, year 12, year 14, year 18. It was the 19th year. He didn't lose sight of the promise of God. I told you, you will keep your focus tonight. And I, that issue, that issue, you will tackle it and you will know great faith. You will appropriate. You will, the intensity you will put into it because God cannot fail. You trust God. You trust the word of God. You trust the promises of God. And you know, you hold on. You hold on. You will see it. You will see it come to pass in Jesus' name. Let's go, let's go to point two. Application. Because if we acknowledge, if the Lord sees it, if you know, but we don't do anything about it. We just talk about it. We just say, well, it seems as if, well, this is good. We want to apply it. Faith is an invisible force and it gets problems solved. It gets problems solved. If only you will believe. The word of God is so rich in pointing us to how we can get what we need to get. In fact, the scripture warns us that when we doubt, just like we read, when Peter doubted, think about it. Peter had started to walk on the sea. Not that he, he was inside the boat. He already was walking. It was the doubting that let him down. When you pray and you believe and you that what you desire, the Bible says, Jesus said, you will have that which you have asked, it's not conjecture. It's not maybe. It says when you believe, whatsoever you desire, close your eyes to what you are seeing on ground. Focus on what you are asking. Focus on the promise that has been given. Focus on what you are asking from the Lord. Focus. 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 God will not deny you. Amen. Your desire, it will be answered. It will be Amen. answered. That invisible force. You know, the heroes of faith, they have through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They were able to live righteous lives. You are finding it difficult to live righteously. Today, up, tomorrow, down. The heroes of faith, when you find someone like Samuel, he could stand before a whole nation and say, all of you come, come on point, show me the wrought righteousness, the subdued kingdoms, the many battles of David and the many wars that he won. In fact, he won so many wars that even from a young age, the people knew, they said, even we had a king, but you are the one going ahead of us. And it doesn't matter if you are young, if you apply this faith. You know, later he came and he said, Goliath, I brought Goliath down. Do you know he brought Goliath down? Goliath that everybody was running yeah. away from. Goliath that even Saul, King Saul, the Bible says he was tall above every other one from the shoulder up. He was running away. But David was able to overcome Goliath. He wrote righteousness. They obtained promises. 
the promises of God that are here and amen. The promises that never can never fail. Promises are here and amen. But he puts to flight the armies of the aliens. All these, the heroes of faith, you know, I will I'll show you some of them, but I want to tell you that in you alone, all this is possible. You can totally subdue kingdoms, whether it's the kingdom of darkness, in your own sphere of life, you will determine that from tonight, because you radiate the light, the efficacy of the light of Christ, you radiate it. So darkness cannot comprehend it. Amen. On chapter 1, verse 5, that darkness cannot comprehend this light, this light that will shine, this life of yours, the light will shine, darkness will not cover it. Amen. You it's in faith, in faith, in faith. Darkness will bow before you. That's right. definitely says the rot right. Look at Hebrews. Come with me to Hebrews chapter eleven. Hebrews chapter eleven. I read to you from verse thirty-two. Come with me to Hebrews eleven. And what shall I must say? For the time will fail me to tell you of Gideon. You know when you talk about Gideon, Gideon did great, great. You know his father had uh, a shrine to Baal. And through faith, by faith, he went to pull down that altar. You know, as you seek the face of the Lord and receive strength and grace from the Lord, it doesn't matter what altar is in your background. Even tonight as you pray, that your faith will bring down that altar. Amen. Amen will have no effect in your life anymore again in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe there are altars that are still functional. You don't know, but because of that altar, wherever it is, tonight, great faith. Sometimes Amen. we talk about going to a particular place to do great faith, great faith. When you issue the command, when you issue the decree, wherever it is, it will be Gideon dismantled. He went there. They came the next day. They said, ah, who pulled down this altar? Thank God they said, if the altar cannot fight for itself, mm -hmm. leave it alone. Leave it alone. No yeah. altar will fight against your destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever, whatever the altar is, it may have worked in generations before, but tonight, want to apply great faith to bring it tumbling down, to bring it tumbling down. He says, the, the Gideon, what will he say about him? Somebody is going to battle. And there are over, I think there are about 32,000 people. And God said, we don't need all the crowd. We don't need all you. Come. Test them like this. So many people went back. Eventually, there were only 300 that were left. And yet, he won the battle. It's not in the number. It's great faith. If 30-something thousand could not win the battle, but 300 people won the battle, don't you understand? Great faith. Great faith. Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who wrought faith, who through faith, Subdued kingdoms. kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. promises. To you know, when you pray tonight, you will obtain the promise. Amen. You know, God had the promise for you before you were born. God told Jeremiah, He said, Jeremiah, do you know that before you were born, I knew you, I formed you, I had a purpose for you, I had a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. The enemy cannot steal that plan. In great faith tonight, you will realign. You will get on line. You will get on cue. That promise of God for your life, it must be fulfilled. Amen. We will pray. Well, let me see. I, since many of us are not interested, the promise of God for my life. The promise of God for my life. My own, you see, you will find out. You see, if you are looking at me today and you are saying, ah, thank God for that brother, you will thank God the more for me because I am determined. I am determined. You will see because I have not come here with cunningly devised fables. 
Amen. Tonight to tell you about the word of God and what Amen. God has proposed and what he wants to do. That there is going to be healing. That there is going Amen. to be healing. That the, you must apply this. Stop looking at the challenge. Stop looking at the storm. See what God has proposed and promised and take it. Something has been coming up for some time. Tonight is the end. Amen. You know, <laughs> Moses told Pharaoh, he said, Pharaoh, you said I should not see you again. Okay, that's the end. I will not see you again. And that was the end. That was the end. Pharaoh looked to find he couldn't. Tonight, you will tell Pharaoh. I see no more. God said, concern. he said, Pharaoh, I will show you my power through your life. God is going to show your Pharaoh his power. Amen. The point is this. I don't want you to just say amen. I want you to know in your heart that tonight you will not see Pharaoh again. Amen. Great, great faith. Great faith. That was what happened. The centurion said, I know, I know that they don't believe. He said, Lord, what is it you are going to? I know that. Just speak the word tonight. The word of God will bring about that which God has promised. That which Amen. you know, he says they obtain promises, they stop the mouths of lions. Are there lions that have been growling? You sleep, and then when you are sleeping, they come with some horrible dreams. That lion, that is the end. That is the end. You know, the the lion was there, but you couldn't touch Daniel. But tonight, your own lion will it will be extinguished. The same way David testified that I tore the lion to pieces, the bear I tore them to pieces. And you will see, God will show you that he has fought for you. He says he shot out of lions. He quenched the violence of fire. He escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, Samson was made strong. He was valiant in fight. They turned to fight the armies of the aliens. All the armies of the aliens that have been making noise around your life. They are going to run, no? They will, yeah. they, will, they will be falling over themselves. Falling yeah. over themselves. They will, be yeah. warning, they will be warning other people, don't go there, oh, that man. Yeah. Something has changed, though. Great faith. Yeah. Great yeah. faith. Yeah. But you will draw the line for yeah. any approach of the enemy. Great faith. That you know that your God is powerful. That you know that God cannot be intimidated. If your God cannot be intimidated. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, and we are in the season, verse 11. So if the same spirit that took Jesus up to heaven, if it is in you, then your mortal body is quick. Then your spiritual life is emboldened. Then the enemy will be afraid to approach you. That is where you are tonight. Great yeah. faith. Let's finish reading verse 35. Yeah. Verse 35. Women, they received their dead, raised to life again. And others, they were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. You know, whatever you lost before, and you thought that is the end. <laughs> the Bible says they received their dead to life again. You will pray that tonight, as you pray and you hold fast to God, you will tell that dead situation, come alive. Amen. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. That dead situation will come alive tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what you will say. That's what you will do. Come back with me to the outline. The Roman centurion, he applied the power of great faith to the debilitating situation and the sickness of the servant, the Syrophoenician woman applied the power of great faith to the tormenting problem and the bondage of her daughter. If we also can believe. If we also can do what? Believe. All you need to do, come to Mark chapter 9. It's good we read this. 
I love this verse of scripture in Mark mm -hmm. chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. I read to you from verse, um, let me read to you from verse 20. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straight away the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and he wallowed for me. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto, unto him? And he said, of a child. It's been long. It's been long of a child. And, says, and oft times it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy. The devil, the Bible says in John 10, verse 10, he comes to kill, to save. Exactly. He wants to destroy this child. But if God must do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe. That's all. That's all. Tonight, if you can believe. It has been there since he was a child. Tonight, if you can believe. If you can believe. If thou canst believe. It has been there since we began the walk. If thou canst believe. If thou canst believe. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Come with me to chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Read it to you from verse 25. Are we there? A certain woman, she had this issue of blood 12 years. 12 years. And had suffered many things of many physicians. Mm -hmm. And had spent all that she had. And she was bettered. But rather, she grew mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And then it's coming tonight. If I can touch, if I can touch the helm of his garment. If I can touch, if you will believe and you will touch the helm of his garment. When she heard of Jesus, ah, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. And touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but it's good, I shall be whole tonight. I have touched the helm of his garment. Tonight, you will determine. You will touch the helm of his garment. You will yeah. touch the helm of his garment. And you will see, you know, it's not something you are going to do physically. You will do it in the consciousness of your mind. Touch the helm of his garment. Touch the helm of his garment. Tonight, you will do it in faith. You, did, yeah. you, you will see, because the Bible says later, the woman came trembling and said, I'm the one that touched you. And Jesus said, you are made whole. Your faith, your faith has made you whole. Don't wait for the faith of the pastor. Tonight is your own faith, your own faith. Yeah. He said, if you will just have that faith and believe, and believe in Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, I'm reading to you from verse... 46, Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. They knew him for begging. They will not know you anymore for begging. And that it was Jesus. All you need to know it is Jesus. And Jesus is not just passing by. It's in our midst tonight. Amen. It's in our midst tonight. Amen. You know, when the overseer told me that this message, you know, I, I would share this message, you know, there's a song. I don't even know how to sing the song well, but God gave me a song in Christ alone. Christ alone. My hope is found. How many of us know that song? Powerful song in Christ alone. That tonight in Christ alone you get that which you are asking. In Christ, yeah. in Christ alone, in Christ alone, you have all that you need. You have all that you want. And tonight, tonight, Christ is here. Christ is here. Yeah. For us. Christ is here yeah. for us in Christ alone. And we will touch you. Amen. Amen. He stopped and looked at blind Bartimaeus and said, what do you want? And let me tell you, you have not yet heard him, but he's asking you already. What is that? Amen. And I told you, when we read in Mark chapter 11, whatsoever you desire, when you ask, 
believe whatsoever he desire. Blind Bartimaeus, what do you want? He said, that I will receive my sight. And he got it. And I'm going to get it tonight. I will get it tonight. Yeah, I will get it tonight. In fact, look at Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. I want you to see something here. Acts chapter 14 from verse, I will say verse 8. But let me just read something in verse 6. They were aware of it and they fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel, like we're preaching the gospel. In verse 8, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, repent in his feet, being a cripple from the mother's womb, oh. never, never had walked. But you know, that man, the situation, situation was so debilitating, he had never walked. But as Paul preached, the Bible says, he steadfastly beholding, he perceived that there was faith in his heart to be healed. Tonight, is there faith in your heart to receive? Faith in your heart to receive. Faith in your heart to receive. It's not enough to say amen, but in your heart, you are so sure that Jesus has paid it all. In him alone, you have everything you need. In him alone, every solution is available. That you are not doubting the weakness you have in your heart. That that weakness will disappear. That tonight you are just believing. That a situation you have been modeling, you have been carrying for some time. This man from the womb. And Paul told him to get up. Because faith was in that man's heart. Why long belief? will keep us away from our inheritance. Great faith causes us to enter God's possession and God's rest. Look at Hebrews chapter 3. It's good we read this. Hebrews chapter 3. I'm reading to you from verse 18. Hebrews 3. Reading to you from verse 18. It says in verse 18, And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them... Are you there? Not. That believed not. That believed not. You know, we read earlier, Jesus told Peter, Peter had been walking with Jesus. Peter had cast out demons. Peter had seen great miracles of Christ. And yet, Christ said, you of little faith. The disciples were there. He had told them, let's get to the other side. His words had never fallen to the ground. But you find them, they were afraid. You want us to die? Will we die like this? Will we die like this? Here, he's telling us that. Those people that had those doubts, God was not happy with them. If there's doubts in your heart about your situation, God is unhappy about it. Verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They couldn't enter in. You may pray and pray for some time. What you are thinking, maybe God wants it to be like this. No, no, no. Look at chapter 4 of that same Hebrews in verse 1. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word that was preached, it didn't profit them not being mixed with faith. Had, the word you are hearing tonight, let it be mixed with faith in your heart. The word you are hearing tonight, let it bring consciousness of the confidence that you need. The Bible says, hold fast the profession of your faith. Hold it fast. Hold it fast. Let's go to the last point. Because when you apply it, there will be accomplishment. Amen. It will happen. It Amen. must happen. Tonight, Amen. it must happen. Something must change. Great faith always Amen. works. It always works. It Amen. never fails. It always secures the blessings sought after. The Amen. servant of the Roman centurion, he was healed. And the daughter of the Syrophoenician woman was delivered. Both blessings were due to the manifestation of great faith. They got it. They got it. Let's read those few verses of scripture. Look at Matthew chapter 8 again. Come back with me to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. 
and believe in God tonight. In Christ alone, our hope is settled. In Christ alone, our healing is assured. In Christ mm -hmm. alone, deliverance is certain. In verse yeah. 7, 8, verse 6, I'm saying, Lord, my servant lies, I'm reading verse 6 of Matthew 8, at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented, but because he came in great faith. Look at verse 13. Verse 13, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, believe. so be it done unto thee. Believe. What is that thing in your heart tonight that you are believing? Jesus is saying to you, as you have believed, as you have believed, let it be done so unto thee. Let it happen unto thee. That's what the Lord is saying. Look at Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. I'm reading to you from verse. Look at that is the Roman, the, the centurion. Let's look at the Syrophoenician woman, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Thou son of David. That's a great prayer point today that you will cry and say, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Jump to verse 28. Verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou. And the Bible says, and the daughter was made whole from that very hour. There will always be accomplishment through the power of of great faith. Amen. The story of the woman, the Shunammite, in 2 Kings chapter 4. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful, powerful story. Mm -hmm. A woman. The husband said, today is not church day. I, you know, thank God even we're in church day. We're in church season. But that woman, the husband said, why are you going to see the man? It's not even the season of, the woman said, it shall be well. Mm -hmm. Child was already dead. He had, she had put the child on the bed, but she said, in great faith, it shall be well. He told, she told the person that brought the uh, horse or whatever they were riding, he said, don't slow down. Keep going, because I know once I get there, tonight you are there already. Amen. Amen. So what you must do is to say, it shall be well. You know, when the, when she got to uh, Elisha, and the, the word of knowledge did not come, the word of wisdom was not there. There was it was just that the woman knew that once I touch the God of heaven through the servant, once I get there, that was all the woman was interested in. And when she got there, Elisha came, and when Elisha got there, that child was handed back to the mother. That's what God will do for you tonight. Amen. In that situation, you've been lamenting about it and you are saying, God, don't forget. Have you forgotten? Why? Don't allow people to laugh at me. This You have been praying tonight. The Shunama man said, it shall be well. Amen. The man said, it is well. And Elisha handed over the child alive. God is handing over that child alive. Amen. But it's great faith. Remember what we read in Acts chapter 14. The Bible says, in he said, Paul saw that the man had faith in his heart. In his heart. He had faith in his heart. In your heart. When you think about what happened to blind Bartimaeus, they said, Shut up. Your case, you've been begging here all this while. Blind Bartimaeus said, He shouted the more, Son of God, have mercy on me, that I will have yeah. my sight, that I will have my sight. Yes. And God, all you need to do is, if thou wouldst only believe, if thou canst believe, huh? that's that can believe. He said, Have compassion on me, if thou canst believe. You want to obtain promises if thou canst believe. You want to wrought righteousness if thou, if thou canst believe. If thou canst believe. Whatsoever ye desire, when ye ask, you receive it. You receive it. You are not going to 
delay. You are not going to postpone. You are going to receive. Great faith always, always works. Always works. It always works. It has never failed before. And I tell you, it will work for you. You are looking for a better job. Great faith. Don't worry about, hey, I'm going to see somebody. Great faith. It will work. It will Amen. work. Amen. The, the, the Goliath that has been making noise. Great faith. David had great faith. It was not in his size. If it was size, David could never have confronted Goliath. But because he had great faith, he said, that God that I serve, the God that I know, the God that has anointed, that God will bring that. You will face the Goliath tonight. Goliath must come down. Maybe Amen. the sickness, maybe the Goliath is affliction. Maybe the Goliath, whatever it is, tonight, 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 mm. tonight, you will touch the helm of his garment. You will yeah. be like the Lord your God. And Amen. just like he said, your own, you will be, it will be you that we will use to acknowledge great faith in our mm. Amen. Yeah, better, amen. Amen. You know, violence or fire will amen. stop. I'm telling you, the mouth of lion making buru buru, it must shut. You must shut the amen. mouth of fire tonight. Amen. Amen. And you will escape the edge of the sword. Amen. Uh, weakness, you will be made strong. You will not be weak anymore. Amen. You will not be weak anymore. Because you will receive, you will receive, you will receive of God tonight. Amen. Tonight is that night. Tonight is that night. And where you are going to start from is you are going to talk to God and say, God, have mercy on me. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Show me compassion. Let me read that place to you so that we, we, we pray the same way that man prayed. It was in Matthew the night. So I said, Jesus, let me you in verse 22. He said, Most times it had cast him into the fire and into the water, so destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Have compassion on me and help me. Have compassion on my family and help my family. Have compassion. This is the time we're going to start to pray. This is the beginning. This is the starting point. Lift up your voices and start to talk to the Lord in prayer. That the Lord will have compassion. That the Lord will have compassion. Have compassion on us. Have compassion on us and help us. This was the prayer of that man. And Jesus told him, you must believe. You must believe. Have compassion on us. Have compassion on us. Have compassion. This is the time to talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's call upon Tell him, have compassion on us. That situation will not continue. Have compassion on us. Have compassion on us. Talk to God. Talk to God. But the Lord will show compassion. Compassion. Compassion on us. Talk to God this evening. Have compassion on me. Have compassion on my family. Have compassion. Have compassion. Compassion in that situation. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. No matter how long that situation has been, tell the Lord to show you compassion tonight. Tonight, the Lord is here to show you compassion. Have compassion on us, O Lord. 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 Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. I'm not going to multiply prayer for us. I want you to stay before the Lord and get it right tonight. And the Lord will have compassion. He will have compassion on you. Tonight, he will show you compassion. Tonight, he will show you compassion. Tonight, have compassion. Have compassion. Have compassion on us. Oh, Lord. Have compassion. The prayer the Lord reached out to him. And that was the end. That was the end. All you need to do is pray. Straight away, straight away, the inside. Oh, yes, have compassion, Lord. Have compassion. 
compassion Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, have compassion on us, bring and tell the Lord, tell him, tell him, have compassion on us. Yes, I have compassion. I have compassion. I have compassion. And the Lord will have compassion. He will have compassion. He will have compassion. He will have compassion. If thou canst only believe, do you believe that He will show you compassion tonight? Do you believe if you will show you compassion tonight? If only you will believe. 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 If you will show you that compassion, if only you will do it. You will do it. Pray and tell the Lord that tonight, 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 tonight.
must change in my life. No matter what the day is, I must change in my life. Oh, my God, in Jesus' name, 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 in
In the foundations of my family tonight, as I dismantle that altar, dismantle that altar in your life, start talking, start talking tonight. We are
We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Jesus came. He came to give us recovery. What restoration? Restored into the good life. That woman, Elisha presented back alive. Every situation in my life, because of resurrection, be resurrected. I every situation. Let's be I believe, O Lord, in your power of resurrection. Resurrected. Oh, King of Lord, I believe in the power of resurrection. I know that my God is Come on, in the name of you, O Jesus. Let the power of resurrection walk in my life. Whatever looks like it is my life. Come my life. Finally, I want you to pray. This time, you know that woman in Mark chapter 5 said, if I can only touch the helm of his garment. Mm -hmm. I want you with great faith in your heart, see yourself touching the helm of Christ's garment tonight. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 verse 8, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same way that woman touched him, you can touch him today. You can touch him today. Yes. You can touch him. Yes, touch him. Touch him. Yes, touch him. Lord, 
Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, it is thy face, it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Even as thou wilt. Jesus, be it unto you, my brother, be it unto you, my sister, even as thou wilt. Be it unto you, even as thou wilt. Be it unto you, even as thou wilt. Be it unto you, even as thou wilt, in Jesus' name. Amen. You are free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you for all you've done for us. For receiving the thanksgiving. For great love that will keep marching on and go higher and go stronger. Amen. Will acknowledge, be acknowledged. Your name will be acknowledged in all the lives represented here in Jesus' name. Amen. It is, Amen. Your, it is your season, Lord Jesus. Move in the midst of your church. Thank you. I know it is done. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.